It's been a long time, actually, since I know, a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah. yeah, several weeks. Mm -hmm. And should we be talking about anything before we take a look at the beeps? Uh, not that I can think of. Okay. And these are from like yesterday. Yes. Okay. Yeah, cool. these are fresh beeps. The last ones from the week that we were going to do them, I just ignored. Yeah. Okay. Good. Cool. Mm -hmm. Then so, I think I'm ready. Perfect. Week number one. Um, so in my first beep, um, I was reading um, notes, and uh, the beep went off on the word depression. Depression. And, depression, yeah. And um, the whole sentence was rapid reduction in depression. And in reading that I was having a visual experience um, and I was visualizing my brother where I was remembering a recent situation where a lie was told but it wasn't realized and wondering at the same time if a person who um, uh, were, were a person who it just doesn't occur to them as it would maybe to another person so that's where I was at. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And so does that, is that, there are sort of three things going on in your experience. One is I'm reading, the other is I'm innerly seeing my brother, and the other is I'm somehow contemplating this lie. Yeah. Deal. Mm -hmm. and, and is one, one of those, sorry? Oh, and um, in, in th real remembering the recent situation w about the lie, I was also um, wondering if a person is who, um, a person who lies, according to like what I was thinking, if if um, if it occurs to them, if it occurs to them what they're doing. So does that mean there's sort of two wonderings going on? There's one. There's there's a wondering of whether the person would know that he's lying, and also a wondering about whether somebody else other than the person being lied to would recognize it. I was wondering, uh, well, I was remembering a recent situation where a lie was told, but it wasn't realized that the lie was told, and then wondering if just any person in general, just a general thing, um, where they could do certain things that don't occur to them, but it's, you know, but to others, it's not right. So I don't know if I'm making sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, is the remembering the same thing as seeing the picture of your brother? Yes. Yeah, so in visualizing my brother, I am remembering a specific event. So I'm seeing it as um, like a still frame, kind of like what we've described in the past, where I see him specifically in the, the situation that, that we were in, um, that I'm remembering. And then, um, and then at the same time, wondering about what I described in terms of what I was reading. Okay. okay. So is, is one of these things more prominent than the other? Um, the most prominent was the wondering, wondering about if, if it occurs to people when they are doing something wrong or if people do things wrong and it doesn't occur to them. So the wondering is about, does, does the liar, the person no. telling the untruth, recognize that he's telling it, that he's yeah. being untruthful? Is yeah. that right? And that wondering is, well, how does that present itself to you? Um, I would say cognitively, it's a thoughtful process. Um, and it's similar to the feelings that I've described before, where it's a sensation of um, some type of sensation, not necessarily physical, but there is a... Um, it's like I'm, I'm trying to search for the answer in my mind. And so that searching is represented as some sort of sensation. Like I'm just, I don't have the answer in front of me in a book, so to speak, but I'm searching for it in my mind. So it's like a sense of sensation. So I'm gathering that there's something cognitive about this. Yeah. In the sense, and is that the, uh, as far as the wondering is concerned, is that the most important part of it is the cognitive reflection on the on whether the the speaker the knows that he's lying yes 
And then there's some kind of a sensation of searching, but we're not, the word sensation is put in pretty strong quotation marks, it seems like. Is that right? Yes. So there, so I have a sense of searching, but it's not like I feel my body searching or right. whatever, but there's some kind of a sense of searching for the answer. Right. And is that different from the cognitive wondering or is that part of the cognitive? Um, it's hard for me to differentiate. I, I want to say it's part of the cognitive process where when you're cognizing things, you know, maybe that it's attached or it come, goes hand in hand, but I don't know that they're, if they're together or separate, separate in my experience, if they come hand in hand or if they're just completely different processes. So I'm cognizing slash searching, yeah. sort of ambiguous to the degree with, but the, I'm cognizing searching about whether the guy who's telling the story knows that it's not true, knows that it's a lie. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And is a and and is that a, a cognizing sort of in general? Do people in general, when they lie, know that they're lying, or is that about the, this some the particular situation that you're interested in? Yeah, it was more particular to the situation. And the, and this the situation that we're talking about is the situation that involved your brother. Yeah. So the question is, somebody said something to your brother. Is that right? Yeah, the, the situation was where I was with my brother and a lie was told in a way that wasn't realized that it was a lie. And I was remembering that in relation to the text I was reading on top of the wondering. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so... so uh, sorry, is the wondering about the person who lied to you and your brother or yes. is it that specific? It's wondering about the nature of a lying person not necessarily specifically the person that lied but just more about the the, the wondering it about the nature of a lie like of a person who makes a lie okay so that sounds much more general like it's spawned by this specific incident but the wondering is about liars in general, general i guess yeah. mm -hmm. okay. okay and and in the picture what exactly do you see um, the recent situation with my brother where we were both sitting in the car, um, and, uh, I just, it's from a, I'm, I'm the driver, he's the passenger, and I'm getting a view from behind, and I can see the back of myself driving, and then the corner side profile of my brother, and I can see you know, the internal part of my car, the inside part of my car, um, and a little bit in my visualization, I can see out through the main, the front window, the landscaping of where we were driving at the time. So I can see the landmark of where we were. So this is a pretty detailed visual scene. It's more of a memory. I'm not making up the visualization like I have in some other cases. This is just me taking that memory. I, I got that, but 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 it's rep, it is displayed to you, whatever that means, visually in detail. Mm -hmm. So it's and and what I'm what I want to make sure that I understand it, it's not just that I remember the details. I remember that I was driving and he was in the passenger and where we were, but that I see them at this particular moment. Yes. Okay. I see myself from the back, which obviously I never have seen myself from the back before. But right. I, at this particular moment, I see myself from the back, and and I see him from the back mostly, but some from the side. <clears throat> and I see the inside of the car fairly clearly, and the outside of the car enough to see where I am. Yes. Correct. Okay. And then I'm reading mm -hmm. about the rapid reduction in depression, mm -hmm. and. And is that in my experience, or, or have I left that behind really in favor of this musing about my brother and liars? So in reading this particular thing for class, I um, that particular subject made me think of my brother, and, made, and then there on, I thought of 
the recent situation, and then it went into the wandering. So I I'll understand. Very I, fast. <laughs> I think I got that, but the the question is whether the reading is still there or whether you have left that experientially behind in favor of the brother and the liar. I left it behind. Um, in in reading that, I had a moment where I was internalizing my thoughts in that way. So it was spawned by the subject, but in the moment of wondering, I took a second to wander in that thought. And then okay. in reading depression and having the wondering thought is when the beep, the beep happened. And so I'm, I'm understanding that I am reading the word depression at this particular moment. Yes. And the question, I guess, is, is that in my experience or is that just a fact of the universe? I am hearing, I, I am reading this word depression, but my experience is aimed at my brother and the lie contemplation. The reading of the word depression is involved in my experience. It's not the most salient but it is involved. Okay. And and how does the reading present itself to you? Um, same as before, it's um, internalized. I can hear my inner voice reading the words. Um, I'm reading the words in my mind, hearing my voice recite it. And when you, we, I think we've had a discussion, I'm not sure about that now, but uh, we had a discussion about whether this is more a, an experience of hearing my voice or more an experience of speaking? Am I speaking these words or am I hearing these words spoken to me? I'm hearing myself speak the words. I hear and then I am, but it is myself hearing myself speaking the words internally. So that that still is not 100% clear to me. So, and we've talked about, I think, about the tape recorder. Mm -hmm. So if I speak into the tape recorder yeah. and I play it back, now I could say I am hearing my voice speak the words. Yes. But the, at this particular moment, the experience would be of hearing. The speaking took place a little bit ago when I recorded it. Now I am hearing my voice. So the question is, at the moment of this beep, is it more I am hearing my voice? Or it's more that I'm speaking these words, and it's also possible that it doesn't. That question doesn't make sense for you. That, that, it, that, that this distinction is not part of your experience. Uh, it's it, to me the way that I can best describe that is that both are occurring at the same time. Like there's, there is me speaking into the recorder, and then simultaneously I am hearing it. So I'm hearing myself speaking, and 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 then hearing the sound of myself speaking. Does that clarify or so, I'm not grasping? <laughs> so I'm not sure that I, maybe I misheard what you just said. So is it the case that I experience myself as speaking and at the same time experience myself as hearing myself speak? Yes, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, then I think I'm good. Okay. Um, okay, so then the next beep is, um, okay, I was typing on my computer, and I typed um, connectedness to the land, and in typing that, the beep went off, um, and in typing connectedness to the land, I was reading a sheet next to the computer that said mobile wanderer nomadic exclusion and at the time of typing connectedness to the land i'm and reading i'm searching for the right words to describe a person who has no connection to to land and um so that's where i was at in that beat and so that sounds sort of like three things to me i'm i'm typing and i'm reading mobile wanderer nomadic exclusion and i'm searching for a word to describe somebody who's not connected to the land. Yes. And are all of those things simultaneously in my direct experience? Yes. Including typing, so it's not like the typing is going on automatically, like like driving sometimes is, or? Typing is more automatic. Okay. And entirely automatic, like I'm 
I'm doing it skillfully, but really it's the words are just kind of coming out. I'm not paying it any attention. Okay. okay. And how about the, but the reading and the searching, those are, those are in my experience? Yes. Okay. So about the, well, is one of them more salient than the other? Am I more into the reading or more into the searching for the word? In reading what I was reading and in searching, it feels that both are happening, um, they're, they're both happening together. They're both uh, I'm perceiving it as a simultaneous experience. So happening at the same time, and do, does it seem like one experience, or do they seem separable? To me, I perceive it as one experience. As okay. I'm reading, I'm, I'm having this kind of inner searching thing going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm reading the words... Did I get this right? Mobile wanderer nomadic exclusion? Yes. Okay. And how how do I experience that? Um, I read the words and I have a lip visual of a nomadic individual like walking through a desert. And um, but it's it's very fast visual to the words and it's not prominent it's not as salient as the searching for the words mm -hmm. um, just in reading I'm giving the words that I'm looking at a visual representation which is more in the background of the searching part okay, okay. That makes sense. so there's some quick visual representation that pops up in the reading yes and is that caught at the moment of the beep, or is that something that has come and gone, or...? It, the beep caught it, caught it at the tail end. Okay. okay. Yeah. And when you say fast, like, is there a way to say how fast we're talking? Uh, I mean, milliseconds. It's just, it's such a blip of, and it's so natural to me that I, you know, could not even notice it unless I was, you know, doing what we're doing where we're trying to catch all that stuff. Uh -huh. It's just like a, you know, you read a quick sentence and I just have like a, just these blips of visualizations with the words. Um, and that's kind of my, that was my experience with that. Okay. And, and like really fast, like on the order of milliseconds. Yeah. It's there and then it's gone. Yep. Okay. And, but apparently long enough or your, you know, experience is a, is a different thing than the physical reality. So you're able to apprehend what you see, even though it's super fast. Yep. Okay. But this is not very salient. Like I'm, I'm more into the searching. This blip is, it comes into my experience, but I'm not paying that much attention to it. Is that right? It wasn't the most important part of what I was doing. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in the previous beep, when you're reading about depression, those words were experienced in a voice, mm -hmm. in your voice, and you were hearing them. Is, is this beep similar to that or different? Certainly yeah. reading doesn't have to be in a voice. Yeah, similar that it, I'm hearing it myself speak um, and also speaking at the same time. Okay. So I am both the speaker and the hearer, just like in the previous beep? And I hear my voice reading the mobile wanderer, whatever. Yes. Okay. I guess I hear and speak. Yeah. And I have a visual blip, a very yes. quick image. And what, what do you see? Something about a desert? Or? Yeah. Um, a nomad, like your old hominid walking through a, you know, Africa desert. Mm -hmm. um, just because the words itself say mobile wander nomadic exclusion. So I'm putting a, whatever visualization that makes sense to those words for me. Okay. And do you see this clearly? Yeah. Yeah. I do. And with details or? I see the, the nomad, um, male nomad, and he's, you know, obviously hairy and he's wearing or has a, you know, a stick. And he's um, 
walking through desert, I can see the sand and the way that the sun would look in a type of landscaping like that. Um, and that's the extent of the visual visualization. Okay. And then at the same time, I'm kind of tied up with the reading. I'm searching for a word that would convey someone who is not at all connected to the land. Yeah. And so how- Searching for a word or searching for a person? Oh. Searching for a way to describe a person that has no connection to land. I'm, I'm searching for a description, not just a word. Okay. For the right words is what I put. Searching for the right words to describe a person who has no connection to land. Okay. Yeah. And how is the searching present to you? Um, similar to the last beep where there's this inner sensing, um, maybe mixed with some cognizing and it's, uh, it's presented as a feeling, but it's not a physical feeling. It's, it's, it's a sensing feeling. I don't know how to describe that it's different. <laughs> Um, it, you know, um, I'm trying to find a way to describe the searching sensation, um, yeah. it's, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it, 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 Is feels, it, you say it's a physical thing or a mental thing? Start there. Um, it's not completely one or the other. It's, it's. But there is like, if this is metaphorical, I don't know if it's applicable or helpful, but it, it's in a way like I am my antennas, like I have antennas on my head and I'm like, like searching for, I, I don't know if this is the right way to say it, like a, a signal to kind of come in and give me what it is I'm looking for. And it, it's like a, it's very metaphorical and it's not literal so mm -hmm. that's what it feels like it feels like um there's a sensing going on there is some physicalness to it but it's not presented in like a touch or a uh maybe like a slight very very slight non-alarming tingle like mm. like a slight tingling maybe um with um a mental um, kind of, I guess I would say clarity, because there's nothing in my mind except for just being clear enough to get whatever it is I'm looking for. Um, that's the best I can describe that. Maybe on the next speech, I can really focus on what that feeling is. Well, it sounds like a complicated feeling, and I'm if I'm understanding you right, it's a, it's like a little bit like a feeling and a little bit like a cognition and a little bit like a sense and it's bodily and mental and it, yeah. it doesn't feel right to nail it down to any one of those categories. Right. Correct. It's like when we go back to some of the earlier beeps, especially when I was kind of talking about being empathic and like putting myself in the shoes of the character that I'm reading, for example, mm -hmm. I'm using that same sense to, um, feel out to cognize what it is I'm trying to gain, you know, and um, it is a, a, a way for me to gain something like a, I don't know, that's the best I can put it. So I, I would agree with what Alec's characterization accepted. It, it seemed like maybe her use of feeling was in the emotional realm and I hadn't heard an emotional aspect of this, this one. This seems like a, sensing that's short of physical but not entirely physical absent but i haven't heard anything about it. this is an emotional deal this one um well, when you say emotional are you saying like i am feeling something specific from like because when i hear emotion i think of emotion like um happy or calm or things of that nature i Right. That's. But, and I'm not really feeling an emotion, it, but it, there is a feeling sensing going on. Um, I I can't tie it to one emotion though. I can't say that 
there is an emotion with it. And if there is an emotion, then I don't have the words. It's hard for me to dissect. There, <laughs> there are words in this business which are more difficult than others. And feeling is at the, at the most difficult end of the spectrum because it means it means a lot of different things in a lot of different contexts and people can slide back and forth from one meaning and, and, and those meanings can be very different from each other. And people can slide back and forth between one meaning and another, use the same word, and 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 they themselves maybe not know what that they've done so. So we have to be as careful as we can be about that yes. particular word. But I'm good. I think I think we've yeah. probably gotten as much out of this as is possible to get. So okay. number three. Uh -huh. And by the way, I, I, when I said what I just said, it sounded like maybe there was some implied criticism there, which there wasn't. No. It's, I, it, is an, it was an acknowledgement that the language is imperfect. Yeah. No, it's good. I don't. I don't take your um, your you as a critical person in any shape, way, or form. So, um, at least not in a negative way. That's what you're worried about. Um, okay. So my next beep. Um, I um, was typing in my computer, um, where was Hitler born? Um, and Austria obviously came up. And in seeing Austria come up, I had the visualization of, of rolling green hills. Um, what I would um, think of Austria looking like. And um, also in a steep sense of wondering um, at this time of searching that, um, how a single man was capable of turning an entire nation against a bunch of people. Um, and then this is, the, and I wrote this, um, it's a sensation of thoughtfulness, it's cognitive, but has this empathic sensing, putting myself in, in somebody else's shoes life, um, trying to understand his hatred. Um, so again, kind of similar to the last beep, same sensing thing going on. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I wrote down. So let me make sure I understand the sequences I had typed before the beep into my computer. Where was Hitler born? In like into Google or something like that? Yes. And and Google had sent me back the answer Austria. Yeah, and the beep went off and, and in you see Austria, I was having the visualizations and pondering. So this the search aspect, the computer search aspect is a done deal a second or so before the beep occurs. Right. And the beep happens. I'm visualizing what looks to me like an Austrian landscape. Mm -hmm. And I am engaged in this searching, thinking, cognizing, empathic, whatever the word about how, how could one guy do this? Yes, exactly. Okay. And, and so the, there are basically two things going on in my experience at the same time. One is I see the landscape and the other is I'm wondering about how this, how this could happen. And do those seem equally prominent, or is one more than the other? Um, I would say that one is. Um, I would say that one is. Um, the pondering is more prominent than the um, green hills. And by more prominent, sixty forty or ninety ten or. Um, I would say the Green Hills are 30 and um, the other, the pondering was more 70. Okay. And the pondering, so let's, so let's go, go over that. The pondering, move into a different place here. Take, take yeah, a time. I'm sorry. I'm going to go this way because my son is trying to sleep and, okay. I'm with you. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, no problem. We're all we're all in a share space kind of a yeah. situation here, doing the best we can and uh, trying yep. to start trying to sort through the spaces that we're in. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, seventy thirty. Um, I would say that um, 
that my pondering was more prominent and the seeing of the green hills was less prominent. Okay. So let's let's see whether we can go through the pondering stuff. So I'm I'm wondering how one guy could do this. Mm-hmm. And the one guy is obviously Hitler. Yeah. But but are, is your is your wondering about Hitler? How could Hitler do this or is it about as a sort of a general thing? How could one guy do this? Or one person? Um, yes. So Hitler is the person I'm thinking of and when I say one guy I'm more like how he's a single man how does this one single man um accomplish that but, we, but you're not interested in in men in general you're interested in Hitler as just one of one of these guys um is that right so in one of the previous beeps we had sort of the similar thing I guess was the liar beep so the question was whether you were interested in the particular guy who lied to you and your brother or whether you were interested in liars in general. And I understood that, that we came down on the, I'm sort of interested in liars in general. I could. In this case, I mean, yeah, so Hitler is the the triggering of that of the men in general. So yeah, they're, they're, the thought for me was how can one man, and yes, Hitler is the, the, the focal point of that, but in, yeah, so more general, more so general. You've general. You've generalized Hitler. Yeah into some unknown population or something like that what, yeah. you're, what you're wondering is about how could a how could an individual not how could hitler but how could an individual a single individual be capable yes yes uh, okay right. yeah and that is a cognitive searching empathic whatever mm-hmm. and so uh, as as tell us again how that how that comes to you well, in this case it was coming to me um, in a, I wrote down a sensation of thoughtfulness and cogn- and it's very, it was cognitive and has an empathic sensing. So in doing that, I am trying to feel what it would have been like to be him and, and what it was that, um, what happened in his life to make him become that person. So there's this like, need to understand so i'm i'm sensing trying to empathize in a way um and again it's that same feeling but i don't know how to describe that it's physical in a kind of slight tingling sensation but it's not prominent the tingling it's not um something that i would focus on unless of course we were doing this and um, the, 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 I guess, more mental feeling aspect is, um, oh God, that, that's where I get, I'll have a really hard time finding the words, is like what's happening in my mental, emotional feeling place. Um, so I, I don't know so, how to describe it. <laughs> so first, first off, I would say that that we're, we are in the midst of what is the most difficult thing to describe. So the fact that there's, we're at a loss for words, we may end up being at a loss for words because there may not just there might just not be words. Mm-hmm. But what I have gathered is that this is in some ways cognitive. I'm, I'm wondering about the facts of how it would happen. And in some way, feeling uh, in the emotional sense, that is, I am trying in a an emotional sense to feel how it would feel to be somebody who could do this so i am i have hooked in my empathic emotional processor whatever that is yeah. and then there's also some sense of a searching which is slightly short of physical but but not entirely not physical either yes and and to say again um with the mentally emotional feeling um i know that in order for me to have thoughtfulness or to be empathic there has to be some level of clarity in myself like i i um by that i mean that i maybe that's like the feeling i'm having is that i'm clearing myself so that I can put myself 
in the shoes of somebody else. Um, and and uh, do you experience yourself doing that at the moment of this beep? I experience myself as cleansing, my cleansing yeah. myself so that I can feel Hitler kind of guy. Yeah, so it, that that's the sensing feeling. The the sensing is like this um, kind of uh, clearing out of my own mental world so that I can put myself in the shoes of somebody else, kind of, especially here, Hitler. So I have to, I'm clearing myself so that I can be um, able to take on his life in my mind. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you haven't answered this question for yourself yet. You're in the process of pondering it and doing what pondering is for you, which is somewhat thinking about, somewhat searching, somewhat cleansing, somewhat empathizing. Yeah. Some kind of sensing, but I, I just, I need to pay more attention to it next time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. I think I'm good. Okay. Um, I um, um, at the time the beep went off exactly when I said the word um, exilic. I don't know if I'm even saying that right. Um, I said it out loud and I typed it as I was saying it out loud. I was typing it into Google to find the exact definition. And the beep just happened to go off the second I was typing exilic into the into the Google Google search. And sorry, I'm, I kind of missed this. Or did you say you're saying it out loud also? I said it out loud. Oh. And what exactly is the word? Like maybe spell it for me or? E-X-I-L-I-C. Okay. Di exilic. Di ex I know it's exile, but exilic. I don't know. I don't I can't know. Pronounce it, but I, know I would need to type things, it into Google. Yes. <laughs> so I'm saying that out loud, and I'm typing it into Google to get the definition. Mm -hmm. Okay. And are both of those things in my direct experience at the moment of the beep? The saying it out loud and typing it is in my direct experience. Yes. Okay. And am I more into one or the other? I'm more into getting the result of what the word it means exactly. Okay. And by more, do you mean a lot more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, most, most important. It was most important for me to get the meaning. So that was what I was focused on in that experience. Okay. And does and that like, mean the typing and the saying of exilic? I don't know how to pronounce that word either. So ex exilic, mm -hmm. I'm saying that. Those are like minor aspects of my experience. Mostly I'm trying to get the meaning. Okay. 80, 80, 10, 10. Yes. So I understand that I'm typing it into the search bar or whatever to get the meaning. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there some other way you experience the trying to get the meaning? Um, like, what am I feeling? Like, how is it representing itself to me in getting, the, wanting to get the meaning? I'm sorry, or maybe ask the question differently. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it sounds like the most prominent part of this experience is I want to get the meaning of this word. Mm -hmm. And I want to know how, how does that present itself to you? Is that... Is that just implied in the typing it in or there's some intention or there's some thought or something? Or? Yeah, there's definitely an intention. And the intention is because I want to um, understand the work I'm supposed to do for my class. So the, the motivation is so that I can properly get what I'm reading. And is that, is the class portion of this directly present to you or is that context? That's, that's why I'm looking up this word, yeah. but it's not like I'm thinking about my class at this moment. Or... Right, it's just context, yeah. Okay. 
but the but the I want to get this meaning that is present to me. That's in my conscious before the footlights experience. I want to know the meaning of this word. Correct. Okay. And does it make sense to call that a mental thing or a bodily thing or? Um, definitely on the mental side and in searching for the word, you know, emotionally, there is like some sense of excitement um, that I am getting the meaning of something that I want and I'm going to get it any second. Mm -hmm. So when you say sense of excitement, is that different from saying, I feel excited? Um, yeah, because it's not excitement like I'm ready to jump out of my chair. It's more like excitement, like a, like a you know, mild excitement of, oh, I'm about to find the answer to my question kind of thing like oh okay I'm gonna get the answer what is it like I'm like I'm ready like I'm I'm at the edge of my seat but I'm not off my seat kind of excited <laughs> yeah so sounds like the just, difference, difference yeah. here is like between potential energy and, and kinetic energy kinetic. You, got the, you got the spring compressed but you haven't let it go yet yeah uh, kind of what it feels like yeah so would it be just as well to say I feel slight or minor excitement or like a growing kind of excitement or like a budding growing. excitement or something yeah it's it's like a mild sensation of excitement a feeling slash sensation of excitement where i'm about to get something that i know that i want I'm about to get an answer and i'm attentive in that very attentive in that excitement um okay. at the edge of my seat kind of you know like 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 this is the climax of the movie kind of situation, but but it's a, a lot more milder than this big old action scene. You know, it's just it's but inside, yeah, I get this kind of sense of excitement that I'm about to get whatever it is that I'm looking for. I'm poised for excitement. Is that would that make sense? I'm poised to be excited. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to being excited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this this here is, or it seems to me, pretty clearly an emotional kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So what we would call a feeling or like kind of poised on a feeling of feelings, whatever, we know it's coming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And do I experience this mild excitement in my body or is this a mental thing or that question doesn't really make sense? Um, well, mentally, yes, there, I can feel the excitement from a mental perspective because my mind is attentive and then from a physical place my body in a way is also attentive to that because like I said I'm I'm fully engaged in getting the answer um so my body and my but I mean I'm not experiencing tension from the excitement physically but I am experiencing a physical and mental attention uh, like I'm fully <laughs> attentive to this moment my mind and body are both perked up, ready for this answer, excited that I'm going to get this answer. Yeah. Okay. And all over my body or in a particular place or can't say? Um, I didn't sense, I didn't go that far in mm -hmm. my understanding. Okay. <laughs> So in some of the, in a couple of the previous beeps, there's been like this searching sense going on, mm -hmm. and that often was related to like I'm I'm tr looking for some understanding or for an answer, and this this scenario here seems like it might be something that kind of calls for a searching, but I don't hear you saying that there's like a searching thing going on here. Is that right? This is a little different than those. I don't have like the sense of searching. Um, yeah, this is different because I'm not searching for the answer in myself. Mm. I'm using something outside of myself to find the answer. So there is not that internal sense of searchingness, cognizing, whatever going on here. This is, I, I want to understand this word. I'm typing it into Google and I'm excited because I'm about to get the answer. Correct. Okay. 
And I want to ask that question in the other way around too. So now we have we have talked about the uh, physical and mental attentiveness or something here. Would that be a, an adequate way of describing what the searching has been in the past? In the, what I have called searching in the past is a physical and mental attention. I'm not trying to talk you into that. I'm. Mm -hmm. I, I really. I want to. I want to know whether. I want to know what you're talking about here. And what, and there is a level cool. of awareness in the internal sensing. Like there, there is an attention that I, I'm putting an attention. I'm putting attention on a particular thing, and I am allowing myself to sense into something, um, whether it be through my imagination or some other thing. I don't know. Whatever you know, that's hard that's a different conversation but um and but in terms of this particular one um the attention and sensing is um is similar to the attention and sensing of when i am internalizing it except in this case um what my attention was on was external it was outside of me and then what i'm internally sensing there's an, I, there, I am putting an attention on something, but it's internal, um, and it's not as tangible to grasp. It's, for me, in this case, it was tangible. I could just go to my computer and type it, and I can get the answer, whereas in the other sense of internal ten, uh, sensing, there's this attention, for sure, and in a way, a clarity, um, because I have to put my mind in another place, so to speak, um, but there, yeah, there is a level of attention in that because I have to put the intention in myself to do that. Okay. Where in this case, it's um, a little bit more simple. There's the attention, but it's outside of me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Great. So we've got two beeps left, but maybe only time to talk about one of them. Yeah, one, I have a one of the. Clock. Is one of them other than, so we've got some studying beeps. Most of these are about studying, or, or either of the remaining two about not studying. Uh, I'm sorry, can you answer that question one more time? So we've got two beeps left, but we can only talk about one. Is one of them not about studying? And oh, um, yes, there's two. Well, well, one is about writing something that I'm studying, and then the other one is um, in regards to my daughter. So... Let's let's go for the la the latter then. The daughter. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, Mila, my my oldest, was um trying to FaceTime me, um to help her with her homework, and um I found it difficult to help her through FaceTime, so I just said to her to come home, and. Um, that I would help her here at home. And I had a feeling of being slightly overwhelmed and slightly frustrated. And so at the very moment of the beep, mm -hmm. is your experience of being overwhelmed and frustrated? Or are you talking to her at this time? Or So the most... Um, prominent part of this experience was that I was feeling overwhelmed and slightly frustrated. Not at Mila, just at that I couldn't help her in the way that she needed me to. Right. And so what, what does this feeling feel like? What, what, how does it present itself to you? Um, it presents itself to me as um, kind of like a building up of like tension in my um, like, uh, I don't want to say in my chest, but it's like a building up in my head, maybe. And I don't have the words in the moment. I'm just, just come home, come home, you know, like, because I can't say, for some reason, I couldn't say, oh, I'm overwhelmed. I can't do this with you over the phone. Please come home. It was just like an overwhelming build up in my mind that where... The frustration was presented itself to me as, oh, just come home. 
just come home, if that makes sense. So does that mean that the overwhelmness frustration is um, primarily a mental thing rather than a bodily thing? Primarily mental. Um, and then there is some aspects of a bodily thing to it as well. Because I do feel um, a collection of tension, but it's not like um, like pain tension or um, like, you know, muscle pain or anything. It's more of um, like a tension in my in my emotions that I can feel um, to some degree. There is a there's a some some sort of sensing of that tension, um, and it. I'm trying to understand how that tension feels, but it's hard to again hard to explain. Um, it feels. So let me, let, let, so maybe we should back up a little bit. Okay. So it, it is possible for, for this situation to involve bodily tension. Mm -hmm. And I can, you know, I can empathize with this situation and I, I, and I can say it could, it could involve bodily tension. And that bodily tension could be in my experience or maybe it, it's not. So my body can tense up because I can't do this. And and my body recognizes that, and my so my body can become tense. But that does not necessarily mean that I feel it. That, that, that yeah. That's in my experience. So my experience could be of a mental frustration, tension. Yeah. Even though my body is all also going through the same kind of a process, or it could be that I feel my body. And I'm, I'm not trying to say that people don't feel their body. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. That's the point that I'm trying to make. And it probably is not as black and white as I'm making it right now. I think it's possible that there could be some hint of what's going on in my body, even though mostly it's mental or mm -hmm. any any variety. So basically, this little bit of a lecture here has been is is about let's not try to presume that just because it's called a feeling that it has to be in the body or it doesn't have to be in the body. Or whatever. Got it. I hear what you're saying. In in this case, it was mostly mental. Um, tension. Um, I would say 90% of it was a mental tension. And then I would say the other 10% of that was a, um, a physical tension related to the mental tension. Right. And the, and the physical tension, physical sensation, physical tension, mm -hmm. is that in any particular, do I feel that in, in any particular way? The physical part, it's, um, it's um, kind of like it, it's just feeling like wound up, like maybe like um, tightening up inside. Very similar to the last beep, where I was just very excited and I was at the edge of my seat. Except this excitement, um, you know, has a different meaning to it, I guess. All right. Mm -hmm. And and I my understanding of both of those is that the, the, the it might very well be predominantly a physical thing, but in my experience, it's not predominantly physical. Yeah, it's in my experience, it's potentially physical or impl implicative physical or something like something like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and is it true that at the same time as I feel this, I'm also talking to my daughter or has that come and gone? Yeah, I'm talking to my daughter. And is that in my experience or is my experience of the pretty much entirely of the frustration and the words are coming out aimed at my daughter, but they're not, I don't even, I don't even hear them, feel them, speak them as far as my experience is concerned. Um, I'm most focused on the frustration um, I would say that I'm 60% focused on the frustration and 40% focused on the conversation with Mila, with my daughter. And, and focused on my daughter and I'm speaking, does that mean I am experiencing myself speaking? Um, I experience myself as frustrated. Um, not so much as speaking. 
I just experience that I'm frustrated. So most of my experience is on the frustration. Mm -hmm. The conversation is happening. Yeah. And I'm, I'm involved in it. I'm the speaker. But I'm not entirely really focused on that. At least not even, maybe not much at all. I'm focused on it. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So I'm thinking we're at a time when Alec has another appointment that she has yeah. she has to go to. So, so I would like to do this again. And if everybody's in favor of that, then I would leave it to you and Alec to work out when. And yeah. So I have a question though, real quick before you guys have to jump off. Sure. Is it difficult? Because I wear the beep when I study because that's my main time where I have my pencil and paper right there. My kids aren't necessarily jumping all over me. Do you want to see more variety in my experiences? I could wear it when I'm doing other things. Um, it would just might be a little bit of a difficult challenge for me to orchestrate that on top of, you know, kids and, you know, the other things that go with that. But I can definitely try if it helps your guys' experiment. I would, I would think that would be interesting. I would, I would think it would be interesting to try it in a different scenario. And if, it, if we can't do it, then we can't do it. We'll find that out. But, uh, okay. So I will try to wear the beeper in more variety of situations. Right. I think that'd be good. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys. Have a good right, day. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, Lena, we'll, I'll be in touch. Good. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.